The date is October 9, 2012. A young 14-year-old girl travels home after taking a mere school exam. Education is considered a terrible crime in her country for girls. However, this does not stop her from pursuing her dreams. She is targeted by the Taliban, a ruthless terrorist group which is against the education of girls. They swarm her school bus, and just after midday, she is shot thrice. She is immediately rushed to a foreign hospital, and this propels Malala Yousafzai's long journey of fighting for equality and the right to have an education for girls in Pakistan. To pay attention to a very young and very courageous girl struggling for her life. A 14-year-old who decided to take a stand and speak out in Pakistan on behalf of all the little girls there who dream of a future and just want to go to school. Malala Yousafzai was born on July 12, 1997 in Mingora in the Swat Valley of Pakistan. This area used to be a popular tourist destination due to its beautiful scenery, but lots is touched soon after the Taliban attempted to gain control of the land. Even though there was this undeniable threat, Malala's father Ziauddin Yousafzai started a school for girls in the area and continued it for many years. By merely attending the school, the girls in Ziauddin were risking their lives. Throughout most of her school days, Malala's life was haunted by the shadow of the Taliban that she and her family and friends found choking them. At first, the school which Malala attended was a safe haven. It was one of the few places in which girls could receive the education that they deserved. There were friendly competitions within grades, and the girls learned mathematics, geography, science, and public speaking. They were a close group, and though Malala had her occasional bickers with her best friend Moniba, she was happy. We were having exam that week and uh, the paper on the 9th of October went very well. It was of Pakistan studies, but the paper one day before was of physics. I love physics, but it was hard. It all went downhill when a couple of Pashtun men confronted Ziauddin, asking him why he was being a bad Muslim. The men were clearly under the influence of illegal radio talks spreading words against girls' schools. The men said that girls should not be educated and that he should stop running the school. He compromised with them, but this would eventually start a long chain of dangerous events for Ziauddin and his family. Around this time, there had just been a massive earthquake in Pakistan and the people were shaken, with much damage in several different towns and cities. Though the government came to aid very slowly, there was quick help from a conservative religious group called Tariq e Nifaz e Shariat e Muhammadi or the movement for the enforcement of Islamic law. It was led by Sufi Muhammad and his son-in-law, Molana Fuzlula. Everybody was very grateful, but the nation was extremely vulnerable and could easily be swayed by someone with bad intentions. Soon after the earthquake, a mysterious radio mullah, someone who preaches religious ideas appeared, spreading word about Islamic law. Ziauddin soon found out that this mullah was none other than Maulana Fuzlala. At first, it seemed to be a regular talk on how to live a good Islamic life. However, the talk soon became more emotional. Stop listening to music. Stop going to movies. Stop dancing. Stop, or God will send another earthquake to punish us all. Many believed him, as it was mainly women who listened to the talks, and they did not have the proper education to know that earthquakes were actually a natural scientific phenomenon. Fuzlula was using his newfound power to gain scared followers after the earthquake. He was twisting around the words of Islamic law, and many people fell into his trap, but Malala survived because deep down, she knew that what was going on wasn't right. Everyone at Malala's school and in Pakistan were talking about Fuzlula, and every day at school, they gossiped about the previous night's talk. One night, however, Fazlullah declared that girls' schools were un-Islamic, Western, and sinful. The safe haven that the girls called school was eventually pulled under the dark cloud of the Taliban as well. Girls were forbidden to go to school, and many teachers refused to teach any longer. The girls who did still go to school and their families lived in constant fear. Any Western objects were banned, and many violators were killed. Women were forced to leave their homes, and the streets started becoming empty. There were still people who fought for the girls' rights to an education, and one of these people was a female activist named Benazir Bhutto. She was shot and killed during a rally in front of thousands of followers, and the nation was in shock. The Taliban had stooped so low that they even shot a woman. These were very dark times for the people of Pakistan. 
Mostly, Malala's family feared for the life of Ziaudin. Regardless of the terrible things going on around this time, Malala started an online blog. In this blog, she got her voice out to the world. She talked about the constant fear she lived in and shared her story with others. She was completely incognito, though she longed to share with others that she was a mysterious girl behind the blogs. In the end, it was Ziaudin who revealed that it was Malala writing, and it was completely on accident. He was talking to his news reporter about a scary encounter that his own daughter had faced, and just about everybody recognized her story from the blog, but it was too late. The public now knew what life was like for the people of not just Swat, but of many places all around Pakistan. This encounter did shed light on who Malala was to the public, however nobody brought much attention to it. As time passed, the violence of the Taliban grew further, and everybody feared for Ziaudin's life. Many of his friends and fellow companions were assassinated by the Taliban. At night, he would take a different path home and stay at friends' houses, worried that he was being followed. He did not want danger to come to his own home, so he did everything he could to keep the Taliban away from his family. During this time, Malala kept speaking out for educational rights. Everybody assumed that the Taliban wouldn't dare attack a small child, so they did not worry for Malala as much as they did for Zaudin. Still, Malala's mother made Malala take certain precautions to be safe, such as ensuring that she took the bus to her school instead of walking to school by foot. The fact that everybody assumed that Malala was safe was their biggest mistake. And one day, Malala was on her way home after a day of exams at her school when she came across a terrifying encounter. She was sitting on the bus the day as regular as the rest, but she felt that something was off. She felt that the road was eerily quiet and there was something wrong about the atmosphere. A man stopped Malala's school bus and aggressively asked, Who is Malala? Though no one replied, everyone turned to look at her, the only girl who wasn't covering her face. The man raised his gun and shot her, though Malala remembers nothing of the events. Others have said that his hand was shaking and the bus erupted into total chaos after the events. When Malala woke up, she was in Birmingham Hospital in Britain. She had undergone surgery that ultimately saved her life, though now her face looked distorted. The Taliban had tried to break Malala, but being the strong girl she is, she recovered, now ten times stronger and determined than before. She became a prominent activist, rallying much more often than she once was, and her positive influence brought attention to the difficulties Pakistani society was facing. Thanks to her hard work and contributions that she made, she broke barriers not just in Pakistan but all over the world. People followed her example in other places worldwide and justice was served. Her inspirational story sets an example for all the little boys and girls, knowing that they too can make a change in the world no matter their age. Malala Yousafzai tore apart the restrictions that girls and women faced and broke barriers in women's rights in Pakistan. And while she was breaking educational barriers, her father Ziaudin broke social barriers, setting a new precedent for men in Pakistan to follow. Her contributions to overcome these barriers brought her international recognition, and she was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 2014 for her beneficial efforts. Over time, her influence spread, and together, activists from all around the world, regardless of their background, united together in one movement, a movement to break barriers and establish equal rights for females all around the world.